Hello, my name is Dr. Henry Sanchez. I'm a professor of clinical pathology at the University of California, San Francisco. I'm an autopsy pathologist, so all the diseases that you will be studying and beyond for the USMLE Step 1 is basically what I've been exposed to. And to help understand this, I also teach close to 600 students each year in the schools of medicine, dentistry, pharmacy, physical therapy, and dentistry. Everyone has got to go through pathology. This is your day today. You can uh, read along as we go through and help fill in the gaps and integrate across other disciplines and related to the clinical disease process. Welcome. We should have some fun. Relax, sit back, enjoy the journey. So the first place we must begin is the fundamentals of pathology. The first eight or nine chapters of their syllabus is really critical. It lays the foundation for the rest of the organ systems. Everybody cuts, gets caught up studying for the USMLE by going and just memorizing disease processes. That's not what they're going to ask on the USMLE. They want you to understand the story and then understand how to problem solve once you see that uh, clinical vignette. You're going to become the most efficient HMO in the history of modern medicine by seeing 350 patients the day you take the exam. So how do we define pathology? Basically, it's a study of all aspects of the disease process, the essential nature of the disease, and why is this so critical in medicine? Because if you understand this, you understand how to prevent a lot of diseases. There are obviously diseases that are going to be genetically predisposed to. Even if you know that, it still can minimize the impact on the individual. The USMLE Step 1 wants to try to simulate the basically a disease process in a clinical vignette. They're going to give you the age, the sex, and by doing that, they're giving you the epidemiology of the disease process. Obviously, if you're a five-year-old, you're not going to have, as a male, you're not going to have prostate cancer. That's kind of obvious. But what you really want to understand is the signs and symptoms are going to reflect what's going at the molecular level. That's going to be translated at the cellular level and then to the organ tissue and organ and to the patient. So the things that we defined, and this is critical, is that they want to define the symptoms as what is the patient's feeling about the disease process. Do they feel cold, hot? They feel uh, tenderness in a part of their body. They're coughing. These are all the symptoms. The signs, as you recall, is what you or the physical exam, and that's what they're going to give you on the, phys on the USMLE Step 1, is physical exam findings, which are the signs of the disease, which where they can start out with the vital signs, temperature, versus what you elicit tenderness in an area which you palpate. A critical thing that the USMLE Step 1 is trying to emphasize to have the student understand any disease process, and that is the pathogenesis. They've shifted from just memorizing the material. You have to understand the story that it generates. And we'll talk more about the pathogenesis in a moment. Another important consequence of a disease process is going to be the complications that arise from that disease process and understanding if you allow that natural course of that disease to take place, then it's going to lead to irreversible damage or the life of the patient will be at risk. As a reflection of the signs and symptoms of the disease process, especially with pathology, is trying to relate it back to the morphologic changes that occur both at the cellular as well as the tissue and organ levels. And this becomes critical in integrating it and correlating back with the symptoms and signs that the patient comes in. And that's how they're going to set the clinical vignettes to you on this exam. And it's critical to understand this process. There'll often be students telling you you should read the question at the bottom of the stem first, but you don't do a physical first without taking history. So you have to set up the paradigm that you approach it just like it was a patient. You walk into the clinic door, you're in the emergency room, you're at their bedside, you're at their home, wherever the situation is, they're trying to simulate that type of process and then they want problem solving on your part. It's not here just memorizing content and regurgitating it. Another important thing when we focus on the pathogenesis the disease process are the structural alterations. The exam in the past, they had a number of images, gross as well as microscopic, but what they're really emphasizing is in the stem or in the choices, a description of the morphologic changes, whether it's at the tissue or cellular level or at the organ level, and you don't have to go out and memorize all these different uh, disease processes 
by measuring, memorizing what is, in terms of what a myocardial infarct is grossly, there's so many variations. You're going to be able to describe each one of these when we get to the cardiovascular system, but it's basically the description that's critical and how you relate it back again to the clinical presentation and how to problem solve a particular aspect of that disease process. They can look at in terms of pathology, obviously the uh, pathogenesis, it may relate it back to biochemistry, the disease process, anatomy, histology, and they don't spend a lot of time uh, you, uh, that you have to memorize all the anatomy and histology, but rather they're going to use the histology anatomy to get to the disease process, and they'll use that as a way of understanding the process. And obviously, all diseases start at the molecular level and how that transcends across all ages, no matter what sex, ethnicity, um, and this becomes very important in how you approach this.